This was probably like three or four years ago. I had a staff member come in and said, hey, Sensei, you have a problem. I just come back from vacation. And I was like, I have a problem. And I thought, we were a team. We have a problem, right? And my, imagine this is my desk, and he had a monkey on his back, and he just took the monkey off of his back and just threw the monkey on my desk. And now I'm looking at the monkey, and the monkey's like, you have a problem. You have a problem. And um, I walked out, and everything that I was doing suddenly stopped. And now I have to deal with this problem that's on my desk. And I thought about, like, how can I train my team to handle these problems the way I would, or these challenges the way I would? Um, so not even two months later, same guy comes in, in Safi, and he's like, hey, you have a problem. And I was like, time out. I don't have a problem. We have a problem. And don't come into my office again unless you have at least two or three solutions to this problem, to this issue, that we can work with. So, a few minutes later, comes in and he's like, all right, well, I have uh, three things I probably wouldn't do the first two, so let's not even talk about the first two. <laughs> Don't talk to me about them. What's the thing you think you would do? Well, I would do X. Tells me about X, goes on and on and on. Insof is a very long story sort of guy. Like, the, the, the sky was blue, the, the carpet was red, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, time out, just give me the facts. They want to know what the meat and potatoes of this. Um, Gives me X. X wouldn't necessarily be the way I would handle it. So I'm like, time out. This is what I would do. Got it. Cool. Tell me exactly what I said to you. Awesome. Go ahead and go do it. And that happened a few more times over and over and over again. Eventually, to the day he comes in, he goes, hey, we had a problem. This is what I did. This is how it worked out. And I just want to let you know. Thanks. And I'm sitting behind my desk, and I'm like, did he just? He just fixed the problem without giving it to me right now? Did that just happen? I called my wife and I was like, babe, you won't believe what just happened right now. They fixed the problem. What I learned was from month to month, the team is going through different problems. And the reason why I called them a team and not a family is because everyone has crazy ass family members. <laughs> and you're always making excuses for how crazy your family members are. That's just the way he is, not just the way she is. And that gives them a lot of slack to be crazy and not to perform. If you're on a team, what's your job? If you're a basketball player, a football player, you got to play your role, you got to play your position. If you're not playing your position, what are you? You're off the team. You're going to be benched first, but eventually you're going to be off the team. So a long time ago, maybe about the first three or four years when I was running the studio, uh, we were running the team as a family. And that just came back and bit me way too many times. A lot of stuff that I would look past just because I liked you personally and, and we were cool and we hung out. Um, but now it's, it's a team. It's no longer family. You have to play your position. You have to play your role. Um, so at the beginning of every month, we review the month that just went by, but it just happened. So on Tuesday, we went over the month of October. And as you guys look at this paper here, we go over what's working, what's broken, what are you confused about, and what's missing. What's working well? What is totally broken? What do we have to get rid of? What just has to stop happening right now? What are you confused about? What don't you know? Like, I thought we did it this way, but we really do it this way. And you guys would be surprised. Certain things that you think that your team knows, that they know, that they know, like you're positive that they know, they don't know. Or they don't know it the way you think they know it. And this is why you're not getting the results that you want. And then most importantly, what's working? And this is where you give those data boys, data girls, like, hey, keep kicking ass. I loved it. Love how you did this. Love how you went out of your way and did that. So what happens is I'll go team member by team member. What are you, what's, what's, what's working for you? What's broken for you? What is not working at all? What are you confused about? And what are you doing good with? So as a team, we'll put it all together. And then it's my job to, fi to figure out what are the three common denominators. And there's usually more than three. But if you guys just look at this paper right now, can you figure out what's bro working, broken, confused, what's missing in your gym right now? Yes, no, maybe so. Right. Yeah, right? So the other thing about this is it gives everybody a voice. 
And it, it gives me a way to teach them how I want them to think. And it gives me a way to see who's actually thinking and who goes, well, I don't know. I'm not confused by anything. We have a girl that we just hired. She's working for us for two months. Oh, I'm not really confused. You're not really, you're not, you worked for us for two months and you're not confused about anything? You must be confused about everything right now because that's impossible. Because there's still some things I'm confused about and I own the place. <laughs> so we have a very close eye on her with that. But then I have other ladies that are, and, and gentlemen obviously, but I have another young lady, Kelly, who is constantly on point. Detail after detail after detail. Guess who I'm looking for assistant manager now? Kelly. So this gives me an idea of who my superstars are, who my rock stars are, who's focused, who's on their game, and who's not. We'll develop the three top priorities. And then from here, we decide what is our main priority? What are we going after? Okay, and this, is, this part right here, what winning looks like is important. Because I truly believe to be unclear is to be unkind. To give your team a cloudy description of what winning looks like is setting them up for failure. <coughs> when they don't know what the course is, because you're the captain of the ship, they don't know where they're going, they don't know how they're getting there, we're going to have issues. So what we do is I have everybody write down what their idea of winning looks like to them. And then we try to paraphrase it together. And then we go through who is doing what by when. Now, I'd be lying to you if I said, and at the end of this meeting, everyone goes and does exactly what we need them to do, and we all move on. No, it doesn't work that way. So in my office, um, I'm not sure if any of you guys have seen the video that, that the team had did when they came down and visited me. Uh, we have these giant dry erase boards. Um, on the, I have the big dry erase board that has all of our stats, has our goal, has how we're closing for each week, uh, and that's kind of like my, my vital signs for the school. And every time, you know, as I'm working in the office, I can kind of look and see where everyone's closing rates are, where we are to our, towards our goal, how far we are away, what's our closing percentage at. And then on the back of my door, I have this. And I have whose responsibility it is to do X and when that responsibility is due by. Yeah, this piece of paper. No, no, I have this on the dry erase board. So I have who, by what, you know, who, what, and when. Gotcha. So you're staring, everybody's staring at it. Everybody yep. It. And, the, and the most important thing is they all know that I can see it. Because they all go home with this paper. They all have it. They're all responsible oh, so for sorry, it at the end of the day. How often do they fill this out? Once a month. So what we do is we review the month that just passed. Yeah. And, 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 and she says, I'm not confused about anything. You're saying, well, you're confused about everything. Like, where's your, where, why aren't you looking for improvement? I mean, is that what you're trying to say? Why aren't you observant about how to make this organization or this team better? Is that what you're saying? Well, yes and no. Because it's, it's part of that shows me that there's a lack of training going on. Someone that's just been hired for two months, there is no guidance. Where's the guidance? That, because she's not observing things. Is that what you're saying? She's because not been taught to see improvement. She's not been taught to see improvement, and there's, there's nothing. No. I, I remember Thomas Clifford told me, and I'm going to take a trend from, from martial arts into business right now. He goes, after a while, martial arts becomes more than just fun. There's the hard aspect of it. It's meant to be hard. It's meant to be difficult. First month of you getting on, hey, this is all the fun stuff. Second month, this is not the fun stuff anymore. Third month now, this is where we're at. This is where you're going to start being a little confused. This is where you're going to start being a little uncomfortable. And the whole idea is when we put them through their 90-day process, this girl's obviously through her 90-day process. She's only been hired for her second month. We're trying to weed out the people that we don't want. Mm -hmm. so, so by her not being confused. What would you like more of this young lady? What would you like more are you saying you want more from her at 60 days, or are you saying we're not developing her? We're not developing her, obviously. She's not being put out there enough. You know, sparring, for instance, right? You always have, you have the guys that you can kick their ass. You have the guys that you're going back and forth with. That's a good mark. And then you have the guys that beat you up. Right? And you, have, and you have to spar with all three people. 
You have to get with the guys that are good, that are below you, so you can work on your stuff. You have to get the guys that are equal to you, so you can go back and forth. And then you have to get the guys that are really good and that, that kick the crap out of you, because that's the only way that you get better. You know. So, for her, for instance, what are we doing to grow her? On my end, on on her manager's end, on her team leader's end, and then what are we doing to to show like, hey? There's more to it than just coming in and teaching class. And if teaching class is the only thing that you're, you're not confused or the only thing that you're do, thinking that is part of your job and, and you feel like you have it down packed, which she does not, mm -hmm. you're not confused about that, then there's an issue. Mm -hmm. you know? So for us, you know, we do the same thing with the managers. I do the same thing with, with the team. Um, but by putting this down on paper and by putting this down on my board, this shows that you are responsible for something, yeah. for results. I, I think that there was something really profound that you said, if I can share. Sure. Because you made a distinction between family and team. Yes. I'm a big believer in that. That's a big distinction. Yeah. Because uh, if everybody is, is the family across the board, then your job almost becomes impossible. Well, yeah, because then I become like a, a father or a brother or figure as opposed to an owner. And it needs clarification because you're responsible to the organization. Uh, you will be devoted and make tough decisions on what's best for the progress of the organization that you built. Yes. And so you've got to have a little distinction between this is my family member who's screwing up that part of the organization versus no, these are team players and everybody's got to perform on the team. My job is to bring them along. I'll do whatever it takes. But the team is the team. I got to represent the organization and the ideals of that organization. I think that that was a very powerful distinction. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions? Sir? Uh, what's the average age of your team? Uh, 18 to 29. Okay. And then actually, and then I have two ladies that are in their 30s. Okay. One. One of the challenges, of course, is with the younger mindset. And I know that it, it wasn't applicable to you, because how old were you when you started teaching adults? Uh, 14, 15. 14, yeah. and you could command the class with no problem. With the younger generation, when you say, what was winning look like, what is their mindset for working with the team to really, that you have to nurture and develop to get them on page to say, a little ownership of what you do? I think it's me casting a vision that encompasses everybody. So me painting a picture that they can all see clear is important. But now thinking about painting a picture that's 3D, that you could touch, feel, smell, and that you want to be a part of. So uh, I constantly refer to my team as racehorses. And I, re I refer to the guys that don't make it into the team as donkeys. Racehorses don't like to be around donkeys. And every now and again, a donkey sneaks their way into my racehorse you know, pen. So you want to pull them out. And, I'll paint the picture of like you are a racehorse. We run fast. We run hard. This is what it is. Explain to me what you think this is. And then you're going to tell me. You'll tell the team. The team will come back and the team will coach you. I'll come back and I'll coach you. This is all done in an open format. Let's say if you guys are all my team, you guys, we're all sitting down, we're all going through this one by one by one by one. Obviously, this would take way longer than the 30 minutes it takes me to do it at my gym. Um, but as a team, you are going to feel like you need to pull up because now you're not pulling the same weight as Joyce is. You understand what I'm saying? Or as I am. Um, so within that fact of me getting an idea of what you think winning looks like and then me painting a picture of what it actually looks like and then you being here and me meeting you here and then us walking together towards the goal. How long did it take you to get them as a collective to see the same <clears throat> it takes. It took a long time. It took a lot of me banging my head against the wall. A lot. And then it, and then it took a lot of, uh, uh, it took a lot of other things for me to build them up into a team. Uh, to give you guys an idea, like just Christmas party, I, I rented a boat and we had a party boat. I said, nobody dies, no one falls off the boat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, we, I took the team to Six Flags not too long ago. You know, we rented a limo, had everyone with the fast pass. Um, I've taken a team to another business summit where they, were, they saw the cost of the summit, they saw the cost of the room, and they were like, oh my God, like, you really invested in us. So they, if they see that you're in it to win it with them, then they're gonna be in it to win it with you. 
to a certain point. I had two guys that left me and opened up a gym two miles down the road from me. It happens. Um, but I feel like what, if they see that you're committed, they're going to be committed. Um, and everyone wants to be part of something that's bigger than them, that they can be proud of, that's winning. Um, you know, and uh, we're talking about the big word is millennials, right? Oh, these millennials don't work. These millennials don't work hard. Mah, 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 mah. Uh, you look at all these YouTubers, right? You go, oh, they spend all their time on YouTube. You know how much work it takes to put into a YouTube video? You know. It's not easy, right? <laughs> Definitely not. Catching the right angle, having topics to talk about. Like, they bust their ass if they believe in it. And if they believe in you. You know? So, I, I, I try not to paint myself as a picture of something that I'm not. You know, what you see is what you get. And this is the rules that we set for the team. And thank God, so far, we've been really blessed. And we're just trying to keep pushing it. We're trying to keep tugging along. So for, for long story short, for what you're talking about, what winning looks like, I'll try to meet them someplace in the middle, get an idea of where you're at, and then move it along. But if you're not coming along the line, I'm not going to get rid of you. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm going to get rid of you. I'm not going to keep you on the team. I can't. I can't have a donkey with my resources. You know, I'm, I'm very quick. That 90-day period is hard and fast. I mean, if you have a system in place, it'll happen that they'll kick themselves up. Yes, because they will eventually get uncomfortable. You know what I mean? If I'm with Luigi and Luigi's working hard and then he's every like five minutes, dude, what the hell are you doing? Why aren't you working? Right. Yeah? Do you find that uh, whether you take them off or they take themselves off, do you lose them as a student or are they able to stay on as a student? Um, we had one lady, Shauna, who has five kids. She was working for me four days a week. Um, it got a little awkward. You know, her kids come and take class. She takes class. Um, you know, we try to leave as friends. You know, the best that we can. Hey, you're always welcome to come and take class. We love you. You know, this is just not the right place for you right now. You know, this doesn't mean the door is always closed. But um, it can. You know, and, and, and honestly, I'm, I'm willing to lose. You know what I mean? I, and I'll take the hit on my unemployment. I don't care. Like, you are going to cost me more in the long term. Anybody else? Any other questions? Sure. Man. So you're doing a tremendous job. I've been in your school numerous times. I've been there during promotions and testing. It's easy to coach a team when they're winning. Uh, winning is a fun, fun thing. thing. Yep. Yeah. And winning is a beautiful thing. We all been there, done that, started the video. We enjoy that. Uh, when your team maybe didn't make their goals for the month, mm. what's that look like? So <laughs> we had a. Because I know you have another side. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do have another side. Um, Depends. If I, have, if, if I have my team and they are down, the worst thing to do is get kicked in the face when you're down on the floor. So you don't kick them in the face, but you do kick them in the ass. And there's a big difference between the two, right? Like, why are you not signing up? Why are we not hitting goals? Oh, because the people aren't ready. They're not prepared. They're not for real. They, they just want to try it out. They just want to do the discount, blah, 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 blah. Is it that or is it because you're just not showing them value. Everyone ever see that Alec Baldwin video? The ABC? <laughs> so the guy's like, uh, he comes into a room and I guess these guys are selling uh, houses or cars. I don't remember what they were selling, but he's like, he walks in and he's like, what's going on? And the, you know, the guy's like, the, the leads are weak. And he's like, the leads aren't weak, you're weak. ABC, always be closing, blah, blah, blah. And the guys are like looking at him and they don't know what to say. And he's like, I have a $30,000 Rolex and blah, blah, blah. And I showed them this video. And they were like, what are you trying to say to us? And I'm like, it has nothing to do with that you're weak. It has to do with that your mindset right now is weak. That's a movie, right? Yeah. I believe so. The mindset is weak. You're, you're in a slump, so to speak, as, as, in, as in the profession of what we're doing in, in, in the sales, okay? So the other video I showed them at this particular point in time when they were like really hitting the wall was, everyone remember Stone Cold Steve Austin? Yeah, sure. Cool. So Stone Cold Steve Austin did a show for WWE and it was called Tough Enough. And he, was, he had three guys that were up and they were doing subpar and uh, he said, tell me why you deserve to be a WWE superstar. And they all had their own little song and dance. Oh, well, because I'm working really hard because I've been doing this in 15 years. And then he goes, let's flip it. 
So he flips it around and he says, you're me and I'm you. Tell, ask me why. And the guy goes, why you deserve to be a WWE superstar? He goes, I don't deserve anything. I'm going to take it from you. I'm going to put my hands around this industry's neck and choke it until it gives me what I want. And my team looked at me and they were like, whoa. And then I showed them Jillian Michaels. Right? What does Jillian Michaels do? Jillian Michaels is up in your face. She, is, she does not play games. Too often they tiptoe being their best self because they're afraid they're going to make somebody mad. They're afraid they're going to say the wrong thing that's going to kill the membership or the sale. And I say just jump into it. That was the point of the video. Jump into it. Go at it 150% and if you do it 150% and it's still wrong, at least we know. But if you're tipping toe, you're tiptoeing at 50, well, how do we fix it? How do we get better? We don't. So more often than not, I'll try to be a little more motivating. I'll be up front. Um, we do have things in place to keep them motivated. Uh, we have commissions set, like whoever has the most signups at the end of the month will get $200, they'll get a gold medal. You cash in your gold medals at the end of the year and you get $100 for each gold medal. So you get everyone clapping for you and cheering for you at, each at the end of each month for the meeting. Um, you do get a little competition between everybody that's, that's there working at, and if you don't like competition then you shouldn't be working for me because that's not the way, sorry. Life is a competition and um, you get compensated. Anybody else? Sir? Sir, you've been talking a lot about uh, the relationship that an employee has with you and that kind of interaction, how you're um, being that voice and how you're inspiring them, what that relationship looks like. But I also know from the video and talking to you that, um, that looking around the room, the employees looking from side to side at their peers, their colleagues, that's also really important, establishing that culture. And you, and like in the video, and what you talked about briefly is about the personality um, and characteristics of the individual and finding and kind of putting the right people in the right seats. What would you say are like the qualities or the things you focus on most for establishing that type of culture where the employees are um, learning and building off from each other? Uh, I look for somebody that has strong work ethic, can't complain. I have a big complaining and gossiping will get your ass out of my place quicker than you could say, I don't whatever. You complain or you gossip, you're, you're not going to be with me. And honestly, honest to God, even if you're a member, and if you're gossiping as a member, I've called members and said, hey, I heard there's an issue. What's up with that? So those are two things that I'm, I'm, I'm looking for. I'm looking for work ethic. I'm looking for somebody that uh, is, 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 wants to hustle, put the time in. They don't have to be great right now, um, but wants to be great. They, they have to have that want. And if everyone, you guys all know what I'm talking about with that want. When, you know what I mean? When someone's willing to sit there and go through it over and over again. And it's not like the first five times I'm going ring, ring, ring. It's the 50th time I'm going ring, ring, ring with you and you're still going, cry is good for you at TK Karate. And you're still willing to go at it. You're not tearing up. Or if you're tearing up, you're crying your way through the phone call. And you're still going for it. That's what I'm talking about when I say heart. Someone that has the grit. Because that's, it, it, it's, it misses. Some people are mi missing that, that grittiness. With that heart and grit, do you find that your employees, that your team, they can be more vulnerable with each other? Yes, 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 yes and no. Listen, I want them to be vulnerable. I want them to tell me if there's an issue, but I'm not their therapist. I've done that. I've been there for every, oh, this and that, and then it's like, it goes back to, again, the crazy family. I, that's, that's not what we're here for. You know, I want you to be open, and if there's a serious issue, like one of my guys right now, his girlfriend is in St. Kitts, and there's a lot of stuff going on, and he'll come and he'll share with me after hours some stuff, and I'll, whatever sort of, I, I, I'm 33 years old, I don't have much advice and wisdom, you know what I mean, that I've picked up for whatever, like I just give my opinion, um, and I'll do that, but it, it's not a therapy session. It's not like, oh, b school's open, doctor's in, come and tell me what's going on, that you had a bad weekend. You know? No, you know what I mean? We have goals to hit. 
Yes, ma'am. Can I buy you? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, yes, you can. <laughs> um, one of my favorite things from the video that we did with you that I've watched back a lot is how well you know your employees based on the personality tests and things that you have them do. Um, I think that that's a really cool thing, and maybe you can talk a little bit about that. The DISC assessment test. So um, DISC helps us determine uh, people's different like, personality quirks or personality strengths and weaknesses. Um, there really are no weaknesses in people's personality. It's just you, know, you understand how somebody processes information, information uh, differently. I can speak for myself. I am a high D and a high I. High D is a hard driving personality, someone that just wants to get to it. Um, actually, if I flip it, if you take... Tell them what the DISC stands the, okay, D is decisive, I is interactive, S is stabilizing, and C is cautious. So uh, if you take all those different personalities and you say, hey, we're going to build a bridge. So Commander Net comes in and goes, hey guys, we're going to build a bridge. I'm going to be the first guy that says, we're building a bridge, let's do this, everybody. C was caution. C was caution. Okay, I is going to be like, woof, we're building a bridge, let's have a party. What, is this, what, is, what does this bridge lead to? Is there a beach on the other end? Are there girls there? What are we doing at this beach? I like this bridge. What color is it going to be? The S is going to be like, but does this bridge go over a uh, sacred ground or a, 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 a bird's nest? Is this going to affect anybody? And then the C personality type, how wide does this bridge have to be? How many feet off the floor? How many lanes is it going to have? Do you guys have a plan for this bridge? You guys don't know anything about building bridges, do you? You just want to build a bridge. Don't have any idea what we're going to do. So you have to look at now the D and the I, people that have that hard driving personality, people that are very interactive, loud, outgoing, funny, those two guys would get along because they're very fast paced. The S's and the C's, those two guys would get along because they're very slow, cautious, and they want to be a little bit more plotting with, with what they're doing. Where you get friction is, if I'm a D and you're a C, and we're going to work together, we're going to butt heads. Because I'm going to think, what the hell's wrong with Luigi, man? Why, why can't we do something? Let's work. And you're, and you're like, what the hell's wrong with Larry? He just wants to look before he leaps. He just wants to run into something. Yep. And we're going to butt heads all the time. So the whole idea now is if I know that Luigi's a C and I'm a D, what do I have to do? I have to come up with facts. I have to lead with what he likes for my conversation with him to, to work well. So by me doing that with my team, one of my main managers, Faith, is a very high S and a very high I. So her and I can get along well when it comes to just being funny or laughing or something that's like a cool movie. But if it's something strong that has to do with like business-wise, if I don't take a minute and ask her how her day is going, if I just get in straight into why is this like this? What's going on? She's going to be like, what is going on with you? Why are you attacking me? What, why are you mean? He works with me too. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not that I was being mean. I was just speaking out of my natural personality type. I didn't take a second to appreciate who she is as a person and talk to her in her language. You know, the golden rule is wrong. Treat people like the way you want to be treated. It doesn't work that way. You have to treat people the way they like to be treated. You know? Um, and that's something I have to constantly remind myself. And I am the worst with my wife. My wife is a high S and a high C. So her and I are constantly I'm like, hey, my love. So if we can get in the car, because we're like an hour and a half late, it would be great. I'm going to wait inside the car. <laughs> oh, you know, and you, um, But you can't be effective if they're just going to shut off. You know, the, so many times have you talked to like one of your team members and they just shut down on you right away? Like, it's because you're not talking to them in their personality. They're, you know, in the language that's strong and powerful for them. Um, that, that's how the disc has helped us. And then we've also taken, there's, there's a book called, you guys have ever heard of the five love languages? Yeah. Great book. Um, then there's the five languages of appreciation. Um, and then you find out, you know, how does your staff like to be appreciated? Do they, do they like gifts? Do they like it when you spend time with them? Do they like it when um, you give them a data boy or a data girl in front of everybody? Sometimes 
you're bringing somebody up, like one of, one of our staff members does not like being called out in front of everybody. And just bringing them up and giving them a medal and having everybody clap for them, they'll smile, but they're uncomfortable and they're not appreciating it. And every time I do that, I'm, neg I'm negatively reinforcing what I want. Not giving them that positive. I've been, me, I'd be up there like, killed it this month. Then I'm there up there like, I hate this. Why did you bring me up here? I'm not gonna do this again. So just knowing that about them. I'm sorry. No, you sound like a Canadian, I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you say to the person who has earned that gold medal and you want to praise them, but they get embarrassed by that? You just walk over and put it on the table for them and say, great job, champion. How would you address that individual? Depending on how you know them, how well you know your team, um, I'd put the medal around you. I would still give it to you in front of everybody and give you a card writing down some of the things I appreciate most about you. You know what I mean? Maybe like a little gift card inside it. Thank something you. like that. You will. Thank you. Um, anybody else? No, but just since you brought up DISC. Um, so DISC is based on the four personality types that Socrates first did. You might have heard them under uh, choleric, sanguine, melancholy, phlegmatic. I've heard those terms instead of DIC. Um, there's a very good book, since you're writing down books, called Personality Plus. And it's by a lady called Florence Littau. L I T T A U E R, I think it is. And it's a very easy read, and it's, in my old schools, it's still required reading by all staff. And inside it, there's a test where you can test yourself, where you can print it out and test other people with it as well. So, um, it's, uh, the DISC system was generated some years later, uh, along with another one called Myers-Briggs, which you've probably heard of, which takes all those four personality types and, and moves them around. But that, that's a very easy read and, uh, and explains the system really well, um, just uses a different term. Larry, you talked about how um, you have like a, a no tolerance for um, talking behind people's back. Oh my God, gosh, yeah. clear effect of not handling problems in a passive aggressive mm -hmm. way. So, what are the mechanisms or the ways that you would encourage positive conflict resolution amongst your staff? So, I think uh, part of that was going over what actual gossip was or is. So, if the three of us are instructors, and we can't really do anything to change our situation, and we're just talking amongst each other, that's gossip. If I'm not passing along to somebody else that can go and make a difference about my situation, that's called gossiping. Okay, if it's, if it's not something that builds somebody up or makes somebody feel better, or talking about like, hey, you kicked that class into you, it was awesome. It's gossip. Um, so it has to be either pushed up or it's done, it's gossip. There's an issue. And you go directly to your superior, directly. Don't go jumping over their head and come straight to me because I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn you right back to your manager and your manager's gonna be all, a little upset with you. Um, so that's, how, that's, that's one of the ways that we determine what is gossip and what is not. And, and so once you have that set, believe me, they will test you. So you referred to your team, and I know the way you have your school organized. Can you just share that a little bit? So uh, for on the karate half of our Beth Page location, we have uh, Crystal, Samuel, Raul, who is our assistant manager, Insop, who's our manager. Uh, well, Insop is like my right hand man. Um, and then I have two or three other kids that, that work for me that started with me as white belts, and now they're, they're black belts and they're teaching. And then on our kickboxing half, I have Faith, who's our manager, Rose, who's our assistant manager. Um, I have Kelly, Karina, and Lindsay, and they're all instructors. So the Faith and Insaf are my two main guys. They report directly to me. Everything else flows down from them. And in the center is Maria. Maria is my office manager. Um, and everybody kind of, if there's anything that has to do with, whether it's clerical work, putting contracts into EFC, doing anything like that, they all have to report to Maria, and Maria will go directly to me. Maria is also my uh, consigliere. She gives me advice before I go to war with anybody. 
or can I do anything? So she, she is a lot more than my office manager. She really kind of gives me a lot of leverage sometimes with just going in, hey, before you do that, let's talk for a second and see how you think about this. Um, I'm, I'm lucky to have all of my, my team members blessed. I have a good crew. Um, but like I said about the whole gossip thing, they will test you, someone will do it. Once you fire one of them, which we did, everyone else will go, he is not playing with this. Let us stop. And, and, it, and it, there's no warnings. It's like, hey, no, you're gossiping. You shouldn't be doing that. That's against the rules. It's, you're gossiping, you're fired, thank you. And I will, sh I will get out on the mat and I will teach class. I don't care, but I won't have, I've been there where I've ever never had that position where you're like, you're driving to your school and it's the last place you want to be because one of your staff members made you uncomfortable about you being in your own place. Yeah. <laughs> You've ever had that? I've had that where it's like, it's in, in your stomach. You wake up in the morning, you can't sleep at night and you're driving there because you let something happen. I won't do it anymore. You're out. Take a hike. I'll deal. I, I'd rather have a crisis in a sloppy situation. So would you say the steps are you expose the error, so what is gossip and identify it? Exactly. You put in the structure and the system for how you want it to be handled, yep. Conduct it, and then you enforce it. Enforce it right away, yep. Via firing or having a real talk with them to let them know how to, go, how to do it better in the future. Yes, most times we're not having a real talk. Most times we're, we're going to be, you know, unless it's something where it's, someone genuinely just didn't know that it was gossip, like, like the new girl that we have, Lindsay, who's two months on, and I could see her maybe making a mistake, but I have somebody that's been working for me for three years, you know what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? A couple more questions? Sir. What are the legal repercussions of letting somebody go that fast with not speaking them first or... Uh, so, in Canada, if an employee is not performing, there's many steps that you need to do before you let that person go, because then they can go back to the unemployment insurance agency mm -hmm. and say, hey, this person let me go with unwrongful dismissal because they never gave me a conversation, they never gave me a chance to remedy it, they never gave me a chance to fix it, they didn't speak with me, it wasn't documented, it wasn't written down, it wasn't put in my file. So, I mean, you have a pretty strict policy where there's zero tolerance, and yes, they're aware of it when they're hired. And there, Any legal ramifications on that end in, in your state? We or? have, in New York State, I mean, I, I feel like the laws are set against the employer. Absolutely. Yeah, the, everything, everything is against the employer in New York State. Um, yeah, so, I mean, one of the things that we have is we have our employment contract where they know it is automatic termination they sign next to it, so it's they in, initial, it's in yeah, it's in the agreement, and it's, it's something that's, that's up front. And then also, too, another thing that we let them know is within that first 90 days of you coming in and hiring, uh, getting on to the onboarding process, uh, each month we're going to sit down and go over your KRAs and KPIs, your key result areas, your key performance indicators, and if you're not hitting each month on par of where we want, you're out the door, too. Do you find that you have a a fear mentality sometimes because the bottom 10% is going to be going out the door. What do you mean? Well, if I'm working in your organization, <clears throat> let's say I'm not performing for whatever reason, it's almost like I know the next step. Does that, does that change at, at any type of... Uh, I mean, well, look at, look at like teams like the New York Yankees, for instance, who, the legacy team, right? If you, join, if you get on to the New York Yankees and you're a player, and you're not performing, what happens? I don't follow sports, but they probably bench them or something. You bench them and then you're eventually going to be off the team. Yeah. Who's responsible to stay on the team? The person that's on them. That's it. Yeah. And that, 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 that's my philosophy. If you want to be on this team, it's up to you. You don't want to be on the team, it's up to you again. If you want to be on the team and you want to work hard and do whatever, I'm going to work with you and, and do what we can to keep you on. I'd be lying to you if I told you all of my staff members are 10 out of 10. There is no, not even close. I'm nowhere near even myself as a 10 out of 10, you know what I mean? Um, but they're works in progress. And that's where the problem comes. When you no longer want to work, when you no longer want to be a work in progress, 
It's when you're at the door.